I have not done this for so long now. I got to think for a minute here to remember what it is I do. But uh, God is good, Amen. And the weather is going to change for the better. And uh, I'll give you my tip of the day, which is it's generally not a good idea to hire an electrician with no eyebrows. <laughs> I want to mark that down on your book in case you ever need one, praise the Lord. But God is good, amen, and he's uh, been good to protect us. And I, I know we're going to take a prayer request here in a moment, but I think we should pray for the entire congregation. This flu thing, they're, they're really hyping it up. And I know it is a serious situation, but you know how the news is, too. They, they want to dramatize everything and make everything even worse than it is and put fear into everybody. And we don't want to be fearful, but on the other hand, we would like to see everybody get through this season without any issues and, and not having to deal with it uh, on any level. So we'll remember that when we pray. Anybody else have prayer requests tonight? Praise the Lord. Tim. Yeah, I just asked, we'll be going out of town, and I just ask God that, you know, all his words of vision, watching after us, make all the things just to be with us. Amen. So, I, I understand how traveling is, and, and you know, you, you go 150 miles and things can be totally different, you know. Oh, absolutely, and, yeah. And that, that along, along the way, that, that God brings those divine plans, you know, and you, and you can feel that pull towards certain people. Oh, yeah. As, as you go, but you know, hey, you need to talk to this man or this lady and, or pray for them. Exactly. And, and you just want to be used wherever you go. Yeah. And a lot of times it's just it's just being nice, right? You know, just being willing to talk. You know, there's some people we we were sitting across from a couple at the eye doctor here last week that they were just he was all bummed out and she just seemed really uncomfortable. And of course, you're sitting this far away from each other just across, and you, you you know you either have to ignore them like like they're invisible, or else have a conversation. Well, they were so hungry to talk. We couldn't hardly get away from them. After our appointment was over, their appointment was already over. They were sitting there waiting for me to come back from the from the from my uh, exam, the second exam. When I come back, they're still sitting there waiting because they wanted to keep on talking, you know. So you never know. I mean, just things like that. Just put a little joy in somebody's life, you know. Just lift them up a little bit and make them feel like they they have value, you know. That that somebody really cares about what they have to say and just things like that. A lot of times. That's just what the Lord wants to do. He just wants to let people know that He's more concerned than we are. And if we can show a little bit of that, then it, it does reveal some of the nature of God and the character of God that a lot of people just never experience. They just All they know is the how messed up you are and how screwed up your life is and so on and so forth. So, yeah, you're absolutely right, Tim. And God does that. You know, we could have, the way the, the, the room was situated, that, it was about the only place we could sit and be seated together because the, the place was packed. And so you just got to figure there aren't any accidents with God. So he puts us in positions where he can be revealed. And, and you know what? You always go away feeling better. Oh, yeah. It isn't, it's not a one way street. You know, you, you can't uh, bless somebody else without being blessed in the process. So it's always good. Anything else? Yes. I just uh, continue to pray for the youth. Um, even along with this line, uh, as the youth are uh, we gather together to pray for certain situations. And, and uh, we just got done uh, teaching on Ananias and Sapphire after the previous week of teaching on uh, Akil and Priscilla, the flip side of things, and uh, just helping them to understand you know, the unity between them and their friends. And future spouses and with God and how all this has to line up and uh, helping them understand that the kingdom within them you know, will affect things around them. And uh, as we gathered and prayed near the end uh, of time, down there, they uh, brought, you know, they got my dad, you know, he's got this going on, and then my uncle, and then my mom, she's doing this. And I pressed them. I pressed them. I said, who in your life do you think the Lord wants to touch? And then it started Mm-hmm. Well, I pressed him some more because I knew that it was there. It was just like, almost like a, 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 a light press. It was just a tree to squeeze it. Well, the floor was over. It just started. It's just, oh, yeah. This, and then we got a couple of girls go to school together saying, oh, yeah, let's pray for that. So it turned out like 30, 35 names within about two 
just just started flowing out. It just started flowing out. So just pray for them because they're they're uh, pray for the hunger to continue and, and uh, the clarity and for them to understand who they really are in Christ. Right. How they can walk in His power and release His power to this for them. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Suzanne traveling? Yes. Oh, no. She's working late. Oh, okay. Praise the Lord. And so is Peter. James is rehearsing for another situation. Okay. Well, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Thank you, Father, for the privilege of bringing these needs before you. And Lord, we know that you were aware of them before they were ever mentioned. But you've asked us to speak, to make our request known, so that when you move in our lives, we know that it's you and it's not just a, a luck or a circumstance or a happenstance. So, Father, we just thank you that right now you're going to be, be moving while Tim and Leah are traveling. Yes. You'll be with them and direct their path. Yes. Uh, protection and provision for them and not only that but Lord that you'll you'll give them encounters with people yes. that you want to speak to yes. and give them the words to speak and uh, Lord we just pray that they'll see uh, manifestations of your love and your your goodness and your glory and we thank you Lord for all that you're doing in our lives we, we thank you Lord for the young people and how you're touching their lives and becoming more real to them and helping them to understand the impact that they can have in people's lives when they trust in you, when they put their confidence in you. And Father, we know that this is a time of the year in this part of the country where, where sickness and colds and flus and so forth are, are dominating the news and, and, and many people's minds. But Lord, we just take authority over that. By your stripes, we were healed. And Lord, we just, we just claim the protection of the Holy Spirit and the price that Jesus paid for our healing. He already suffered all of these things so that we don't have to. And Lord, we just stand on that tonight and declare that it will not come near our house. Praise the Lord that we will be healed and, and delivered without even having to know that we were subjected to the sickness or the germs or the viruses or whatever they might be. We just believe, Lord, that that you are with us, covering us and protecting us in every situation and every circumstance. We thank you, Lord, for the safe trip uh, and make it enjoyable for Tim and Leah. Bring them home safely without any accidents or incidents. Only the blessings of the Lord would be revealed in Jesus' name. Lord, now all the unspoken requests that may be uh, represented here tonight, Lord, we pray for Diane's uh, complete and total recovery. And Lord, for confidence that you would just give her a confidence in you and in your finished work. And Lord, we just ask that all of us would be a reflection of your goodness and your glory, of your love and your reality, Lord. Help us, Lord, to just live our lives in a way that pleases you and blesses others. And we'll give you all the thanks and the praise for it. And everybody said amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What do we got for announcements? Anything? Oh no, Sally's in control of an electronic device. Stand back. I'm just grateful there's no laser. Okay, Winter Jam, uh, the 26th. And if you have any questions about it, everybody's invited. Mike uh, will be going, and, and uh, if anybody wants to go, you can get with him. And Are we meeting be... there? Yeah, he was going to talk about that and try to get everybody to kind of be seated together in the same area. So. On Sunday, we're going to confirm what and where got the map, the seating map, and stuff like that. So, um, Sunday, Sunday is the day we formulate this thing. Okay. I think that's the right word. Works this for me. This is the following Friday, right? Yes. Okay. We can this Friday. Yeah. So, if you can come, come. Bring a young person, bring a friend, bring an old person. Bring anybody, just show up, enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Is that it? That is it. All right, let's praise the Lord. Oh, I guess we'll take an offering. Uh, Ron, you are the des designated offering taker upper, so. God bless you as you give, and uh, Ron, if you would, ask the Lord to bless us. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. Yes. yes. Especially the new life in Jesus. Thank you for what you're going to do this year. Amen. Thank you for what you're going to do on my 
many words of grace in our midst. Thank you, Jesus. And we're just going to be open and embrace it and receive it and expect it to be beautiful. In Jesus' name. Thank you for this offering and as you would bless this offering. Amen. 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 Amen.
in the space. We're just going to see his face through. He's going to see through all of us. Yeah. Okay? We'll go to a much better place. Well, a better place is here. It's just the place is going to change as we're pouring it out. Amen. Okay? We're going to dance with all of our might, lift up our hand, enjoy. Time's drawing here. Well, he was going to appear. He's going to appear through his, his bride. Yeah. Okay? The, 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 the thought pattern of these songs needs to change. We'll stand by his side, a strong, pure, spotless pride. Now, not then, but now. Yeah. Hallelujah. So.
Let's lift our hands to the Lord right now. He is worthy, hallelujah, of all of our praise and all of our worship. He is a mighty God, hallelujah, our everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He's all things for every situation. In fact, the Scripture says He's beautiful in every situation. Praise the Lord. So we give Him praise tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. Thank you for being you and never changing. We bless your name tonight. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Abel. Everybody's doing good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you all again for coming out tonight. Praise the Lord. I'll give Mike a chance to get up there and get everything tuned in. But when I get into this uh, tonight, and I, as always, it's Wednesday night, I'll try to be brief, but um, I'll preface what I want to talk to you about tonight with this. And I mentioned Sally and I were talking about this this afternoon. In fact, I was telling her that, you know, every, uh, every denomination within Christianity has their own particular revelation. Some we share, some not so much, but, uh, you know, just like there are some groups that, and we've talked about it before, they they reach a certain place. Uh, they believe in water baptism, uh, believe in uh, being born again. Uh, Jesus is the only way to the Father. But they stop there. And then you go to another group that believes in something more than that. And not, that isn't the end, but then God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And that He wants to give you the gifts of the Spirit so you can operate in spiritual ways speaking in tongues, which to the uh, previous group might might even be called blasphemy. And they, I've even heard people say that that's of the devil and, you know, all these kinds of different things. So here's what I'm trying to get across. We, we have to be careful to only get out of an experience the revelation that's in it. Or otherwise we end up like the cat that sits down on a hot stove. He'll never sit down on a hot stove again. And that's good. But the problem is he'll never sit down on a cold stove either. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If that makes any sense to you at all. What I'm saying is we take one thing out of a revelation and leave that and, and never move on and never take advantage of the, the good, amen, that can come as a result of that, that we can move forward. So God is not, he's never done is what I'm trying to say. So just because we have one thing, uh, we don't want to get stagnant. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, the, a group that came before, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. Because what they believe, they believe, and it's true. We believe it too. We just believe more. But that doesn't mean we know everything or by any means that we have arrived. It just simply means that we need to continue to be willing to go forward with God 
And as God gives us revelation, we can't limit it to just that revelation. We have to be willing to receive that revelation and then be able to go forward because that's the reason for revelation. It's to open another door. It's to take us deeper and deeper into God. It's said that heaven will just be one continuous revelation of God. It'll never end. For eternity, there'll be greater and greater revelation of God. So that's, that's what we need to understand. And we need to try to walk out our uh, quote-unquote Christianity in that frame of mind. So with that in, in mind, let's, go, let's begin, uh, Mike. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8. And I want to read verses 5 through 13. Matthew 8, 5 through 13. As we know this story, everybody's probably heard it multiple times, but it's about the centurion. So when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goes. To another, I say, come, and he comes. To my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you that I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. So there's multiple things there that we could talk about, but ba basically what he's saying is that this guy, his faith was so powerful, and it was based only in what Jesus said. Now you read that and you think, oh my God, people are going to be cast into outer darkness. Actually, what he's talking about, he's speaking of the Jewish people. This guy was a Gentile. He was a centurion. He was a Roman. And, uh, but he believed, and many of the Jews obviously didn't believe. They operated strictly by their religious rituals, and that was it. So he said, they'll sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, the, the patriarchs of the Jewish uh, genealogy, and uh, not knowing that it's still by faith. You can do all the religious stuff you want, but if you don't exercise faith, you're not going to get very far in this. Praise the Lord. All right, Hebrews chapter uh, 1, verses 1 through 3. Sally and I, again, we were talking the other night, I don't know, last night, the night before, whatever it was, about some of the things that I preached here just recently. And uh, what, what I'm saying is this. It's nothing new. The way I'm saying it might be new. But I'm saying the same thing that we've said all along, right? right. That this is about faith. It's about us being one with God. It's just a different way of saying it is all this amounts to. So it isn't like I'm coming... You know, somebody might think, well, this is some new, it's not a new doctrine. I'm just saying it in a different way, but it's the same stuff. It's the same truth. Amen. And uh, that's, I'm not doing it just to be, uh, you know, controversial or something, but, or provocative. I'm doing it because people get tired of hearing the same thing, but it's by hearing the word and hearing the word that faith grows. So we just have to come up with different ways of bringing the word so that we don't get bored so that we don't think we know it all you know what I mean because we hear all if you've been around very long you heard all these stories and you think oh here we go again I've heard that before so all this is all that the Holy Ghost is doing and all that Jesus is trying to do is to give us a different way of looking at a truth that has been settled since before the foundation of the world we just have to come up with ways of, of expressing that that'll get people's attention that'll get them to really think about it instead of just kind of going oh here we go and then you tune out because I already know that right praise the Lord so anyway God who at sundry times and in a diverse manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds 
who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So now he's telling us, if you get back up to verses 1 and 2 again, Mike, he, he, up to this time, to the time of the birth of Christ, he spoke, he presented himself through the prophets and through the fathers. And, and now in these last days, in the time that this was written and today, he speaks to us by his son. His Son, who is the Word of God made flesh, right? Whom He hath appointed heir of all things, and by whom also He made the worlds. How did He make, make the worlds? He spoke them into existence. So it's the Word that we're talking about. Verse 3. Who being the brightness of His glory, the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the Word of His power. Now that tells you something very powerful. That this Word... Not only did it create this world, it sustains this world. And it's true for each and every one of us. We were born again by the Word. Amen. And so we are to be sustained by that same Word. We are a new creation. And so we need to, we need to approach our life and our relationship with God with that understanding. So this, this is the understanding of the power of words. Words that are filled with faith. If we can go back to Matthew 8, verse 10. So when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. What did he mean by that? Well, because this guy was willing to believe without a spectacular sign or wonder... All he needed was the Word. And I can say this uh, from experience. One of the negatives, if you will, and I, I say that hesitantly, but of Pentecost is that we get so hung up on the supernatural, on the miraculous, on the signs and the wonders, that we don't move unless we see one. Right. That we, we, we have to have something dramatic, something, you know, huge, to get us to believe stuff. Come on. So he's saying that this guy, he believed, and what was so powerful about his faith was he didn't need a sign. He didn't need to see some miraculous thing. He just believed it because Jesus said it. That's right. And that's what impressed Jesus. And that same faith is available to each of us through this same word. Praise the Lord. Look at Psalms uh, 107 and verse 20. I'm not saying signs and wonders aren't good and that we shouldn't, you know, believe in them and shouldn't experience them and shouldn't enjoy that. But when we make that the litmus test for everything God's going to do, we diminish what our faith. We're not operating in faith. It doesn't take faith to believe when you see a miracle. Right? right? Miracles are for the unbeliever. Right. We're supposed to see this, the, the results of God's promises simply by believing what He said. Amen? Amen? The other stuff is icing on the cake. But he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. That's one of the scriptures I quoted for months, back actually for over a year, when I was diagnosed with hepatitis C and going in every week or every uh, two weeks for liver scans and all this other stuff until they told me they couldn't find anything anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They said if we didn't have this stack of previous tests, We'd have to say, you never had it. Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, that was, I don't know, whatever it was now, 15 years ago or something, but however long. Uh, all I did, I didn't take any med. There wasn't anything at that time. They didn't give you anything. They just followed. They, gave you, they took blood tests. They did liver scans, and that was it. So all I did was confess the Word of God. All I did was say what God said. And I was healed. Praise the Lord. It works, is what I'm saying. It really works. Praise God. So the Word, He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. The Word became flesh. The Word became Jesus, right? In Him, in God, 
in the Word is life. And that life is our light. It's, it's what leads us and guides us and gives us revelation. Amen. Psalms 119 and 105. Psalms 119, 105. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Praise the Lord. That's what Tim was talking about. It's what I was talking about. Praise the Lord. We don't always know what to do next, but He leads us and guides us. It gives us light. It gives us revelation. It shows us the path that we should take. Amen. You know, here, here's an example. Peter had seen all kinds of miracles. He'd seen all kinds of signs and wonders, right? right? But in spite of all the healings, in spite of seeing the dead raised, in spite of uh, seeing multitudes fed with just a couple of fish, and on the Mount of Transfiguration, he heard the audible voice of God, and he saw Moses and Elijah. Praise the Lord. But look at this in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 through 19. 2 Peter 1, 16 through 19. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. For He received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. He's talking about the Mount of Transfiguration. He said, We have also more sure word of prophecy. Now get this. He said, We, 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 we are on, the heavenly, on that uh, holy mount where we saw Moses and Elijah and we heard the audible voice of God. He said, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people would argue with that. How could you get something more sure than what you saw with your natural eyes and heard with your natural ears? Yeah. But that's what he's telling us. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. We have a more sure word than signs and wonders is what he's telling us. Amen. So God never promised daily visions to us. He never promised us miracles every day. He never promised those things for us to live by. But a book full of living promises. He sent His Word, a book filled with Himself. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter 1.19 We have also a more sure word of prophecy... Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. So here's what he's saying. Take heed to the written word as though it were a light that shines in a dark place. And you do that until the day dawns and the day star rises in your heart. So Peter is saying... You may not hear an audible voice. You may not have a, uh, a vision every day from God. But you do have His Word. Yes. His revelation. His wisdom. And it's as sure as the sun rises every day. Praise the Lord. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. See, when you think about... Uh, Abraham and, and different ones over uh, Moses. The years that went between what God said and then some miraculous sign like the burning bush and what have you. And then he goes years without any sign. All he had was the word that God spoke to him, right? And that had to sustain him. And that God is trying to show us something. Yes, the, the miracles are great. The signs and wonders are, are tremendous. But you don't get them every day. You have to have something that sustains you, something that will keep you, amen? And that is God it revealed in His Word, continuously. Oh, it's always there. Praise the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Praise God. Faith in His Word. 
Not faith in signs and wonders. I believe in signs and wonders. We've seen them. I've seen them. But I, I can't live off of just signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. Come on. Praise God. Mark chapter 4. And we're going to re let's read uh, verses 1 through 14. Mark 4, uh, 1 through 14. Again, these are familiar scriptures, and this is where Jesus is teaching. He, again, he's, it's a parable, and so he's trying to get them to a spiritual place by telling them things that they can relate to. Farming and, you know, the, the agricultural kind of lifestyle that most of them lived in those days. So he began, to, again, to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship, sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and he said unto them in, this, in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Some fell on thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no fruit. Other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. In other words, his followers, his immediate followers came and said, What were you talking about? What did that mean? Right? And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word. So here's what he's saying in a nutshell. He's saying the people who are not believers always have to have a sign. Didn't he even say that to the Jews who, ha who did not operate in faith, they operated in obedience to a law. Right? right. So that's what he's saying. He's saying that uh, the, the, the people who have to have a sign are not exercising faith. But the kingdom only works one way, and that is by faith. He told us that earlier on in the scripture. We said they'll, they'll be cast out into outer darkness and so on and so forth. And so he says, and here's the deal. It's about the word. The sower sows the word. So everything he was telling them about this agricultural kind of uh, analogy was about speaking the word. Saying what God says. That produces. It's the only thing that produces. It's, it's God's economy. It's how God created the earth. It's how God created everything. Is through the spoken word. And that word became flesh, and we beheld His glory, they said. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And we have that right here. Praise the Lord. So the sower soweth the word. Praise God. And the, the word of God is seed. Drop down to verse uh, 26. Let's look at 26 through 29. Verse 26 through 29. So the word of God is seed. Because the sower sows the word, right? And he said, So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. So, the word of God is seed. So if you want to harvest, if you want something to manifest, you sow the seed. This seed. This is what you say. This is what you speak, right? Let me show you an example here. Uh, Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 through 6. Genesis 15 and 1 through 6. And see, he says, this is how the, he's telling us, he's making it so, so clear, this is how the kingdom works. Praise the Lord. You say what God says. So after these things, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? 
And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. So from the moment, amen, that God told Abram that he would make him a father of a great nation, amen, Abram could have said, Okay, from now on, I'll call myself father of many nations, right? And I'll be father of many nations because if God said it and I agree with it, then it will be. Amen? Abraham, Abram could have done that. And he could have saved himself a lot of trouble and us as well. But he didn't. And he didn't because he wasn't born again. He wasn't spiritually alive the way we are. Praise the Lord. And there was no written word for him to keep before his eyes. So all he was seeing was, I'm childless. Now, put, come on, because we can relate to this. We all have things, you know, that we want to see come to pass. But here's the deal. We don't see it. What we see is the symptoms. What we see is the empty bank account. What we see is the dysfunctional relationship. What we see is whatever it is that's in the natural, right? And that's what Abram was dealing with. So all he was seeing was, I'm childless, I don't have a seed. And so what did God do? He changes his name. He literally took a new identity. Abraham, which literally translates father of many nations. So God gives him this new identity. How many of you know we are a new creature? We are a new creation in Christ. Amen. And so Abraham and everybody around him now is calling those things which be not as though they were. Every time somebody said, Abraham, they're saying father of many nations. They're calling things that are not as though they were. He didn't have any kids. He still didn't have any, any offspring. Right? And every time Abraham said, What's your name? Uh, my name is Abraham. My name is father of many nations. So everything he was hearing from other people and everything he was saying was in agreement with, with God's word. He was speaking to things that were not as though they were. Amen. So Abraham was speaking the same word that God had spoken, and he was hearing that same word spoken. Praise the Lord. Look at Joshua now, chapter 1 and verse 8. So this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Praise the Lord. So the Hebrew word here for meditate, thou shalt meditate, that Hebrew, you can look it up yourself in Strong's Concordance, it's the number 1897 in the Hebrew, and it says Hagah is the word and it means literally to murmur to mutter to speak to oneself to talk to others to utter that's what the word literally means so Joshua was promised good success if he'd go through life speaking God's word to himself and to others no matter what the situation was now I'm, I'm telling you how this works now it might seem simplistic it might seem uh, you know, just like that's, that, that can't be. That's just too easy. But that's the way God has set this up. And how many people within Christianity do it? Very few because we're, we're too busy fasting and praying for a miraculous visitation. And I'm not saying we shouldn't do that. I'm just saying we'd have far more manifestation if we would just stay faithful to this word and say what this word says and not everything that comes into our head. And everything that we see in the natural. It's called discipline. Praise the Lord. So, when Abram finally received by faith 
that he was the father, amen, of many nations, it still wasn't something he could see. He received it by faith. So we know he couldn't have seen it or it wouldn't have been by faith. Right? He wasn't seeing it with his natural eye. He wasn't seeing it with his physical eyes. So how did he see it? Psalms 2, verse 1. This may seem out of context, but it isn't because it's simply the same word being used again here. And I want to show you what it means. How, why do the heathen rage? Why do the unbelievers carry on? And people imagine a vain thing or something of no value. That word imagine there is the very same word that's used in Joshua chapter 1 when he says meditate. So this word imagine, it's the same word, Hagah, to meditate. And it's translated here as imagine. And the idea is this. As we go about, like Abraham, like Joshua, like Peter, constantly speaking God's word, an image arises. Amen? We begin to see in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. We begin to, to get an imagination. Praise God. Anybody ever just imagine stuff? You know, kind of like we call daydreaming? Do you ever imagine what you would do if you if everything was the way you wanted it to be? You know, if you had all the finances you needed. And, you know, I'm not talking about being doofus, but I mean just what you could do and how you could do. You just imagine, you know. Yep. Praise God. We're calling those things that be not as though they are. When we do that, it triggers an image within us. If you're faithful to this, and if you'll do it consistently, it will trigger an image. And you, you'll believe, you'll just start believing it's going to happen. This becomes more real than this. We're connecting, we're hooking up with God. But it, you have to be consistent about it. This is where we fail is we'll, we'll confess the word and then something happens or somebody does something or says something and we go right back and say something totally contradictory to this. So we never fully get the image going. Am I making any sense? That's what you have to, you have to be consistent. You have to be, like he said with, with Joshua, if you keep this thing, if you keep this and meditate on it, imagine It'll come to pass. And I was thinking, of, the reason I'm talking about this, it, when Rita spoke Sunday, it made me think of this, and that's what got me going in this direction. But Rita said, I don't know why. I just know that God is good. I just know that God won't fail me, because He said He would never fail me. And she said, so I just, I just somehow I just know that this is going to be, it's going to be all right. It's going to be taken care of. What is she saying? What she was saying was, She's talking about hope, was she not? She used that word multiple times. What she was saying was, I've, I'm hoping for this to the point where I imagine it will happen. I actually have an image now that tells me it will, even though nothing has changed. It doesn't make sense, but something is giving me hope. And that hope is creating an image or an, an, in my imagination that this can happen. So that word will trigger this image within us. And that inner image turns to hope. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. When you may feel hopeless because all you're getting is this negative report. But if you stay faithful to the word, it will trigger an image in you that will produce hope. Even though there's no reason for hope in the natural. Are you with me? This is what happened with Abraham. It's what happens with all of us if we'll be faithful to this. And people say, well, they're hopeless. Well, they're not if they would turn to the Word of God. And if they would confess what the Word of God says about their situation instead of what the doctor is or somebody else or the banker or the lawyer or whoever it might be. But it takes perseverance. It takes consistency. It takes a little effort. Praise the Lord. 
It's all there, but it's the way that this thing works. Amen? So this turns to hope. And hope is where Abraham saw himself as the father of many nations. It's where he got the image, okay? Look at Romans chapter 4, because he, by faith, he believed it, but he hadn't seen a thing. Nothing had changed, right? Praise, Praise the Lord. All right, Romans 4, verse 16 through 18. Therefore, it's a faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Right? Therefore, it's a faith it might, that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, not to only the Jews, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, because he was before Judaism. In fact, he was the first Hebrew. The Hebrews, that... The actual definition of that is to cross over. Amen. So that's it. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Praise the Lord. All right. Now let's look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 11 through 19. I mean, I'm thinking, Tim, you know, you, you guys got so, there's so many, so much time has to be dealt in the classroom, right? And then there's time out actually taking the theory and applying it to practice. Well, imagine if we would do the same thing with the Word of God that your students do. In order to be successful, right? And what we all do, if we, if whatever it is, I, I think of uh, Sarah and Eric and their business. I mean, you just didn't wake up one day and go, "Well, here it is." No, you. It it takes some effort. You have to study. You had to learn. You had to do something, and then you put it into practical application. Well, that's the thing with Christianity. We just want immediate results. We want the drive-through stuff without ever making any real. In, investment in it. And that's what God says. Those that, those that are outside, they, they don't get it. Why? Because they won't apply the Word. They won't use the Word. So they don't get the benefit of it. Not that God's withholding it from it. He's telling us how this thing works. If you'll just do it, you can have all the benefits from it. So likewise, the student that goes in and just blows off the, the, the written information, doesn't pay any attention to it, he's a complete failure when he gets out there on the road because he doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing. And now he's a, not only is he a danger to himself, but everybody else. Praise the Lord. And I wouldn't want to be eating something that was being prepared by somebody who didn't know what it was they were doing. It's like the electrician with no eyebrows. You don't generally want to hire that guy, you know? So you see what I'm saying? Praise God. So we, we desire that every one of you do this, show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. So that you'll do the same thing Abraham did so that the hope will rise up in you. You'll have that image and you'll get to see the results. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. God swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, that's us, the immutability of his counsel. In other words, the steadfastness, the truth of what he's told us to do. Confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. So we, you know, people blame God because I didn't get my miracle. You're not, you're not doing anything to produce it. And this, I, I've said this before, but from the cross forward, everything is objective and subjective. 
That doesn't mean that we manipulate God. It just means that whatever God has said, we are co-workers with Him. In other words, He says, this is how it's worked. If you'll do this, this is what you'll get. Now, He's not talking about works. He's talking about faith. He's talking about believing. And we want a miracle and then say, see what my faith did? No, faith has nothing. Miracles are not for, they don't happen. They're not happening to build up your faith. Because it doesn't take faith to say, I saw this miracle. No, that was just something God did. What takes faith is for you to patiently endure saying what God says, developing this image, this hope that's set before you, and that will produce. It will produce what only the Word can produce. Every, every material thing because we go all the way back down to the atom and to the quarks, and I don't want to get into all the metaphysics and, and the, all of this stuff, but I'm just saying, everything that exists, exists because God spoke. Amen. And it exists right now because of that word. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil. Goes back to what I've been talking about the last couple of weeks. It takes us into this oneness with God. Amen. The Holy of Holies, the holiest of holies, the holy place was beyond the veil. That's where God's presence was under the law. He's using that metaphor just to show us that it's this way that we make the connection with God. That we hook up with God and get the fruit of of that relationship, which is the supernatural, which is the manifestation of these promises. Praise the Lord. So, thank you, Jesus. Real Bible hope isn't wishing for something to happen. Hope is a divine inner image, and it's birthed by the Word of God, and it's birthed in our soul. Because your spirit already knows it. Your spirit is already just like God. It's your soul that you got the problem with. So everything I've been talking about here recently is about this connection. About this intimacy between mind and spirit. Between the natural man and the spiritual God. That's the marriage that we're talking about. The, that produces offspring. That produces fruit from the marriage. What is the fruit? The promises of God manifest. So, it's literally uh, the blueprint for faith. It's how faith is developed. Hebrews 11.1. 1. So look at this. We're talking hope we have as an anchor. Amen. Sure and steadfast. That, that will bring us into this intimacy with God, into this oneness with God, into this soul-spirit connection, into our suke and spirit, right? So now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's faith. Faith is what we hope for what we can't see. And we've made it all kinds of other stuff. We've made it, oh, if I just get it, if I can just faith it, you know. Look, man, it's this and this and this until it starts to create hope in me to where I begin to think, this could happen. This could, has, it, has anybody, you, you've been there, right? I mean, you, no reason other than like read a Sunday. I don't know, I just, no, God will do it because God said He would. And, and I'm, I have hope. And hope is an anchor for this thing that wants to be led astray by every wind of doctrine, by every bit of information that we pick up and everything that we hear and everything that we see. Amen. This thing is an anchor. Hope will anchor you to this. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So hope is what
faith has to have in order to bring the promises to pass. It's the, it's the anchor of the soul. Sure and steadfast. Sure, get that, sure. And steadfast means it doesn't move, it, it doesn't change. It's for sure, and it's not going to change. Whatever it is, is what it is. See, we, we not only have a more sure word of prophecy that Peter talked about, we have a sure hope if we will stay in agreement with this word. If we will anchor this to this, hope will be the result. 2 Peter 1.19, let's go back there. Oh, no, no, you don't have to go back. Let's, when I, I read that earlier, but it, what it says is that God's promises enter our lives, bringing light to what it is we're facing. You say, well, I can see what I'm... No, I'm talking about it brings revelation. It brings spiritual reality to the natural. The natural is dark. It's disconnected from God. So it's, it's always referred to as darkness. Well, we've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness, from this natural world, to the kingdom of His dear Son, who, by the way, happens to be the light of the world. Amen? His word is a light to my path. Praise the Lord. So, here's what he's saying. As we meditate on the word, as we mutter it, as we speak it, to ourselves, to others, the light becomes brighter and brighter. It grows and it develops on the inside of us, eventually giving birth to an inner image of what we are believing to receive. So, I'm wrapping up here. So here's what I'm saying. Receive the seed God has for your life. Whatever it is. It's here. There's a, there's a promise for it. And then begin to speak it, hearing it, muttering it, imagining it, hoping it, and meditating till you begin to see it inside, till you begin to dream dreams about it, till you begin to have imaginations, daydreams, or whatever, however you want to define it, however it works for you. But that's what we're talking about. Till it becomes an internal reality to you. A hope. Amen? Once you do that, Jesus said, it will sprout and then it'll turn into a great harvest. And all you got to do is reach in and take it. Praise the Lord. That's how this works, church. And we try to gloss over it and we try to take the fast food way, you know, the, here it is. You know, if you have to wait in line at the fast food place, doesn't that irritate you? <laughs> if the microwave, you know, takes more than 10 seconds to heat the tea up or whatever it is, you're, you know. That's, that's, that's our natural way. We want everything right now, but we don't want to invest anything in it. Thank God for all the technology and all that stuff. But I'm just saying, He's, he's given us a proven way to get results to get these promises into our lives and listen not only not only will it happen but it'll make life a whole lot more exciting because you don't have to wait for some supernatural visitation of some kind you can have God operating in your life every moment of every day continuously you can be aware of it because you're saying what he says it's a connection you become the mouth for God. You become His His body. Amen? The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that's what we are today. We are the body of Christ. And if we're not saying what God says, it's no wonder that people aren't attracted to us. Why they, that's why they want miracles. But Peter said himself, what? Why us? We have a more sure word of prophecy. Amen? We, we have a more sure word than any miracle. 
Because I'm telling you something else. In the last days, the enemy is going to come and he's going to do some stuff that's supernatural. That's not normally seen. And if you don't have a foundation, he said, even the elect would be deceived. He doesn't say we will be deceived. He just said, it's going to be so, so real looking to people that if you don't have a sure foundation, if you don't have an anchor for your soul, if you don't have the Word of God and know the Word of God, you can be swayed away by it. Mm -hmm. Amen? <laughs> you know, we've all seen, have you ever seen, uh, what is that guy, that magician, that... Uh, Uh, anyway, doesn't matter who it is. But he does some stuff that just freaks you out. I mean, when you see it. He's, I, I forget his name now. The, no, it's the, the Gar Carbonaro effect. It's, bit, it's weird. He just does some really strange stuff. And it, you're going, my God, how, how, does that, how does he do that, you know? Well, the enemy is going to have the ability to do those kinds of things and greater things than that. So if, we, if we're depending on a miracle... He can, he, can, he can mess you up. He can take advantage of you. But if you're depending on the Word of God, you see, that's the point. We're not supposed to need miracles. We're supposed to be operating in the supernatural. Mm -hmm. Miracles are for people who don't know the Word of God. That's why we lay hands on them, right? That's why we, because, right? We, because we have this knowledge. We have this this wisdom, this revelation. But if we're not going to use it, somebody will. Because they'll come along, somebody, just like I said before. If you don't, you know, you may never sit on the hot stove again, but you won't sit on the cold stove either. So you're not going to get the benefit. You'll, you'll get the warning, but not the benefit. So that's what he's trying to give us is not, don't be afraid. 90% of the time, that stove's not hot. It's just when it's hot, you don't want to be sitting on it, right? Praise the Lord. That's the cat. That's what the cat. So he's trying to give us some revelation here that will move us beyond just the, the knowledge, but to a place where that knowledge can be applied and bring benefit to us. Right? Because we all got the Word of God. Every, it's available to anybody. But if it's just a religious ritual or just a, a book of rules and regulations, that's all you're ever going to get out of it. You're just going to be bummed out, depressed, self-loathing, you know, a failure because nobody's keeping all these rules. Hello. Didn't get an amen there, but that's why Jesus came. Because he's the only one that could. And he accounted that to our account. So that we could then operate by this word, even though naturally we're still flawed. We are spiritually just like Jesus. So it's t about time that we started getting our mind to work like Jesus' mind did. He only said what his father said. Yep. Amen? He, you know, when somebody comes, just like the centurion, my servant is grievously sick and dying and Jesus said, I'll, I'll come take care of it. The guy said, don't worry about it. Just say the word. See what I'm saying? And that, Jesus said, I've never seen that kind of faith. In all of the religious people, I've never seen that kind of faith. It's, it's our opportunity to impress God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I believe. And God called it righteous. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I just, you know, I just think it's, it's high time that we started taking this seriously. Doesn't mean you've got to memorize the Bible. Doesn't mean you have to be religiously fanatic. It just means when you've got a need, there's a promise in here from God. And that's what you should be saying and not... Uh, this will never work out. It's never worked out for us in the past. You know, and we've had this. You go by circumstances and past experiences, it'll rob you of every promise of God. You have to go by what? Abraham had every reason to doubt. 
99 years old. Hey, we've been trying this and nothing's worked. She's infertile, I'm impotent, whatever the deal was, but whatever, they weren't having kids. And they had plenty of years of practical application that didn't work. And yet, God told them something that he believed. Am I, am I right? I mean, I'm not trying to be crude. I'm just saying, he, they said, okay. And the more he said it, what God said, the more hope began to arise in him. And it happened. So it doesn't matter how many years you've been struggling, how many years you've been trying to go and get past this and all that, whatever it might be. If you will be faithful to say only what he says, he vowed, God vowed and swore on himself that this has to happen. So that eliminates any argument as far as I can see. We just have to be disciplined enough to do what he said in order to get the results that he's promised. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate your patience tonight. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Go. Talk like you are somebody. Praise God.